So last time we talked about sequencers. Today we're going to talk about uh, bit shift left or uh, bit move commands and fi file fill. Uh, thing with sequencers, a um, couple limitations I should have mentioned last time was with sequencers, I can only really use that if I have every output on the same output card. I hope that was obvious that when I use the two sequencers to do two different things. But you know that's one thing I just need to mention. Also. Um, those are great to execute the stuff, but there are some some applications where I want to store data or track data along assembly line. Um, so that's where the bit shift left comes in and the uh, file fill comes in or the first in, first out or last in, first out, et cetera, et cetera. Um, just to show you what I got going on over here is I have, again, reset controls on just like before. We're going to use that control tag um, because with Bishop left and Philfo, uh, FIFO, uh, first and first out, we we need a control tag to remember where we go. Okay. Also, I have the, I'm using the file fill again to clear out um, data. So this is a file fo. This is an array of integers. I will show you this right now. And this is an array of dits. Now, uh, three dits. Because here's the thing. This command here is going to be used to store actual numbers like temperatures and weights or barcodes or or something that actually is larger than a one or a zero. Where the the bit shift left or is going to be storing just ones and zeros, and we'll explain what that looks like in a second. Um, this is just to to clear to clear some uh, dents. Okay, let me go to my program tags to show you. You can see with my FIFO right here, um, there's some values in here already from the last time I ran this, but notice these are actual hard numbers that, that runs the range of what the integer will allow for, the integer data tag. Remember, the integer data tag can run from like negative 332,000 up to positive 32,000, give or take some bits. That's just estimate. But this can store any number between there, okay? And I have an array of 50 of these. So in theory, I can store 50 of these numbers. Um, with my bit shift, though, I only have three dents, but all I the perp, but the but that's all I need because. As we'll explain, the bit shift's purpose is to track something along an assembly line or a bottling plan or something along the lines. And we'll show you how that looks, looks in a second. But let me just stick with the, the FIFO. Um, but you can see it's just storing hard, hard, da hard data values. Okay. And what happens is when you need two commands with the first in, first out. And just as I have a timer that's just cycling, so I can just move whatever accumulated to my weight, so I can have a various numbers so I can show you a difference in numbers. But what happens is with these two commands is every time this run goes true. So say this is a, now this is a push button, but say it's a, a barcode proximity sensor so that when a box goes by and a barcode reads something, it will take whatever is in the value of weight and store it within the net in the, in the array title FIFO. And this position remembers, okay, since I've already used up position eight, store in position eight. Then, then at this, so and then that number will be stored. This goes up one, okay? So on, and so forth. We'll show you that in demonstration purposes. But so I'm running this thing, so I'm tracking these boxes, so I have all these weights, and this is called first in, first out load because when we unload the first one in for you know. Is the first one off so think of it this way you know so say this is the door the doorman that lets in lets in someone and we start stacking people in line so here's mr you know here's mr one guy here's next guy they, every time this goes through we start stacking people in line okay and there's kind of hanging out so you know there's hanging out different sizes but they're just waiting their turn because you know, this is like Disneyland. You get in the first, this one lets you into the queue. 
this one lets you onto the ride, so to speak. Um, so here we have we have um, sorry, I'm just trying to so okay. So here's my five guys that just every time I push a button, boom, 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 boom. I'm just stacking them up. All right. And so now, so now when this goes true, this guy gets off. So he's gone. So he's gone. Goodbye. And now he's waiting a line. So when this goes true, this guy goes away. So now we have three guys waiting a line. And so that's a purpose of the FIFO is that this loads so this 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 command loads this command unloads. And we'll show you that in practice in a second. Okay. So let me talk a little bit. So, so this is again, good for storing values that are not just ones and zeros, but large values like barcodes, weights, temperatures, things like that of a process. Okay. That you want to utilize later on down the line in your core. Where we have the bit shift left. So with the bit shift, let me try to draw this as poorly as I my art skills are. So say I have an assembly line or a conveyor belt. So here's my conveyor belt. So here's my conveyor belt. I know it's poor. And say I have a sensor on the inside. So there's my sensor that that tracks every time this turns. So say this is a magnetic sensor and there's a magnet on this on this on this rotor. So every time it passes this, this goes true. OK. And so in theory, then I know how many times. That that wheel will rotate to get something to go from here to here. So this thing keeps spinning. So spinning, spin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, let's say that we know that this rotates 75 times. And in this, this would be the first place. And we can almost say that we can subdivide this conveyor belt into 75 little segments based upon how many times this rotate. Correct? And if I had another sensor, so let's, let's call this purple thing a sensor. So we're going to call this a, a sensor. Here, that any time that a part is here, passes through the sensor, while this is going, it will record that there's a part. And so as this guy then moves, So say he starts moving every rotation. We could track him if he's here, here. Let me get you a better color. So if he's here, 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 here. And let me just say for, 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 for kicks that this is a bottle filling plant. And... This is a giant fun, just humor me. So this thing keeps turning, and this is a bottle fill. And so instead of having a sensor here, I can just track where this bottle goes and when it gets into, if there's a one here, and if it once it gets to number five, then it can fill the bottle. Does that make sense maybe a practical application of the bit shift because what this command does and this timer simulate this timer here is simulating this here the the rotation it's hard to simulate so every second this thing is going to go off and, and kind of flicker that's why the one shots here and this here This source bit is what's being read, and that is right, is what's being read here. 
I hope you can see that. I know this looks like fifth. I know this looks like fifth grade art, but it'll make more sense when I go live. So let me erase my drawings, get back here, and then we will. I will demonstrate. This is all clear bits. So first things first. Let me demonstrate the first in, first out, and I'm going to um, view uh, the watch table. This is the watch table right here, and you can see because this will make more sense. But let me go to run. And so now, just take a look. There should be, you know, in my bit shift, there is nothing, there's no bits in there. In my first in, first out, everything is clear. But now watch, when I hit, make this button go true, through, through, watch what goes right here. Three seventy seventy eight. Or 3878. Now watch what happens again. Now if you pay attention to what the number is, notice every time I push a button, compare that to what's going on here. I says I have five values filled up of this FIFO. Every time it goes through, it's just figuring out what's in this weight value and then transposing it into here. So watch that again. It should give me a number that goes into 5. 506, 507. And I should have, and if I count up my values, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8, you know, that's I I I'm tracking along. But now this is just literally just stacking people and stacking weights in line. Okay? Or stacking barcodes in line. And if I wanted to then use that value for something, say for tracking purposes, or for the next, or or load it into the next uh, uh, system or next process, here's a here's a another bit here. If I flip that, whoops, you can see my values are shifting up as I this goes through, and this value is going down. So watch, that 384 is going to disappear, and it just keeps going up, and it's unloading that into Convert, and then it's gone. So, and if I, I'm totally empty, then my empty bit turns on. So my enable, my unload, and I'm done. Now, if I actually get values all the way up to here, um, it will, uh, the done bit will turn on. But this is, could be helpful. This could send an error to another process, say, hey, I'm empty, feed me more. You know, but this is a good way of tracking. Okay? That is how a first in, first out works. There's also first in, last out, first in, uh, load and unload as well. All those can be found under in, in the sequencer or, or file shift. Um, so here, this was a sequencer. I should have showed you that yesterday. You know, there's a sequencer of a file and shift. You can see my first in, first out, unload, last, you know, last in, first out, load, and unload. Works exactly the same way. It's just a little bit different. Okay. Let me minimize this and let's work with the bit shift. Okay. So let me go down and you can see that oh, I accidentally um, hit a number, but that's it's gone now. So let's take a look. So right now, th there's nothing going because this, this is. Basically, when th this is going to wait for this to toggle before it goes, um, but it and it's going to toggle when I you know record the button or, or turn the switch on. Now take a look here. What happens when I flip a switch? So right now this is not. It's just recording zeros. But when I flip a switch, see there's a there's a two. There's two ones that just got recorded because I left that switch on for two seconds. Okay? And now, let me do that again and watch what happens when it gets to, watch what happens to this output right here when I flip a switch on. And notice this value is getting really big right here. So watch what happens. You can see ones are loading. And you can see the one go true. 
I just flip the switch off there, and you can see now zeros. And now basically, I've just I'm track I, I'm literally tracking a part down some bits. Do you see how that zero one and just it's like we're tracing a one going down 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 down. That is how a bit shift works. That is how a uh, first and first out works. Okay. And so, and even with the bit shift, it's just going to, if every time it goes through, it's going to read something right here. So with this, uh, when this done bit toggles from, from false to true, it's going to read what's there. So basically every second it's reading. I hope you have, if you have any questions, see me, but that's a bit, and there's, this can get a little more complicated, but that's a basic setup of a first in, first out in bit shift command. All right. Um, hope this makes a little sense, but again, you'll get better with it if, when you, when we get in the lab. Let me, so, so we'll see you soon.